Hello, this is Shannon Kleibrink, and you are listening to the Future of Curling Masterclasses presented by Curling Canada with support from the World Curling Federation's Development Assistance Program. In this episode, we explore Curling Canada's long-term curler development model, a customer journey into recreational curling, and strategies that progressively build confidence in new participants as they discover, try, learn, and play the sport of curling. This masterclass is presented by Dustin McCush. Dustin is a curler, coach, and educator who is passionate about creating impactful change in the curling community. Since stepping on the ice at age seven, Dustin has competed at the U18 and U21 Canadians and coached at U18 Nationals. As an association administrator, Dustin championed new youth initiatives like the U12, U15 Triples Cups and now leads youth development at Curling Canada. Hello, my name is Dustin Mickish and I'm the Community Development Manager with Curl Sask. And thank you for joining us for this masterclass on a customer's journey in the sport of curling. You would never ask someone to marry you on a first date, nor should we expect people to seek a relationship with curling that does not offer a pathway of progressive actions. Today, we will learn more about a customer's journey through curling's pathway and a strategy to achieve a fun, fulfilling and enjoyable experience. As we move through this masterclass, I'd like you to think about a few questions. How are you planning to deliver curling in the future? Does your curling center or program have a clear pathway to allow curlers to easily access the next level in their curling journey? And what strategy does your curling center or program use to foster a fun, enjoyable experience? Today, we're gonna to be talking about more about the LTCD pathway. Curling Canada's mission is to inspire and lead all Canadians from playground to podium to make curling a part of their lives in the way they enjoy it most by fostering an environment and system that allows them to achieve their personal goals. To support this mission, an intentional, recreational and competitive pathway is required. In 2023, Curling Canada launched the updated pathway, the long-term curler development known as the LTCD. Curling Canada's LTCD model is a multi-stage framework that includes appropriate pathways for curlers of every age and ability. The LTCD was built on Canada's long-term athlete development model that promotes lifelong engagement in sport and physical activity for all Canadians. To begin, I'd like to acknowledge this guide that has been produced by the Curling Canada team of athletes, coaches, and developers who are dedicated to the ongoing refinement of the LTCD model. The primary goal of the LTCD is to support curlers who are at various ages and stages so that they can continue to grow, develop, and have fun in their curling journey. Through the Long-Term Curler Development Guide, Curling Canada strives to give the tools and skills to athletes, parents, coaches, instructors, and administrators to provide opportunities and improve all curlers' skills. The LTCD is built through the foundation stages and three pathways, the recreation, competitive, and podium pathways. To begin, the foundation stage exists to help young curlers develop both an interest to support their future participation and the aptitude to support future competitive success. The recreational stage is made up of a single multifaceted stage and the recreational pathway offers multiple points of entry to accommodate curlers of different ages and experience levels. The competitive stages that make up the competitive pathway encompass all competitors in our sport with the exception of those who compete at the most elite level. The podium pathway is the stage reserved for highly skilled curlers with the demonstrated potential to represent Canada in major international competitions. Over the coming minutes, we will begin to learn more about each of the different pathways. And whatever a path a curler is on, this model makes it possible for every participant to become a five-star curler. Curling Canada's long-term curler development model is designed around the idea of building a five-star curler. The five-star curler is someone with the necessary skills to succeed at their current stage before advancing to the next. To build a five-star curler, instructors, coaches, and organizers need to focus on the technical, tactical, physical, mental, and social skill development. And in order to build the five-star curler, coaches must also focus on stage-appropriate blend of training, competition, and recovery time. The foundational stages provide children and early teens with a gateway into our sport. It is very feasible for young participants to initiate their involvement at any of these three stages with the optimal timing dependent 
on their interest and availability. The first stage is the fundamentals, and this is U9, so ages six to nine, and represents an early start opportunity for children with a strong desire to get involved in curling and the ability to balance curling with all the various sports that they play, as we really encourage kids to play multiple sports at a young age and in the fundamentals stages. And this, at this stage, it can start as early as age six. Moving into the learn to train stage, this is U12, so this is our 10, 11, and 12 year olds and marks the recommended starting point for most young curlers as it offers ample time for anyone to develop the necessary fundamental skills. And really in this learn to train stage, there's a um, healthy amount of training as well as a little bit of starting to intro to competition. Train to train U15 is our next stage in the foundational stages and allows established young curlers to further develop their skills while still giving motivated beginners a suitable opportunity to catch up. At the fundamentals, learn to train and train to train, U9, U12, U15, we really want our young, young players to be playing all the different positions, learning all aspects of the sport um, and developing their skills. So this can be through singles, doubles, triples, fours, and really um, placing an emphasis on rotating positions and developing all aspects of their game, as we mentioned earlier, to build a five-star curler. So really focusing lots on technical, tactical, social, mental um, at, this, at this age and stage. At all ages and stages in the LTCD, there's a percentage of training and competition, as we mentioned earlier, and equally important to have the right proportions of training and competition. It is important to provide young curlers with adequate recovery time, especially at a young age, and especially as they play lots of different sports. Um, the off season is also really an important time, time for recovery. The next pathway we're going to move into is the recreational pathway and features a single stage known as Curl for Life for ages 15 and plus, which welcomes a wide range of non-competitive curlers. To do so, this stage offers multiple points of entry to accommodate a wide range of participants. So the first, the first stage in the recreational pathway is for older teens at 15 plus, and it really welcomes older teens who had curled at maybe the train to train stage, um, along with those with little to no curling experience. And the key commonality in the older teens 15 to 12 um, is that they're among age peers and desire to curl for fun. So they may have been in a youth learn to curl program and now they're looking to pursue the recreational pathway and now they are looking to be on the route of the curl, curl for life 15 plus. And next moving into beginning adults, this is 21 plus, this is welcomes adults with little to no curling experience. And then these newcomers are typically attracted to our sport as a means of staying active and or socializing with like-minded peers. The final stage is the experienced adults moving over from the competitive pathway. That is participants who have chosen to end or postpone their competitive involvement, but they also wish to stay involved in our sport recreationally. The recreational pathway or Curl for Life 15 plus stage includes benchmarks designed to build the five-star curler in this case this means a curler with the necessary skills to enjoy curling on an ongoing basis. So very similar to the foundational stages that we chatted about earlier. The next pathway is the competitive pathway. And this encompasses the full range of competitors in our sport with the exception of those on the podium pathway. And it's made up of three distinct stages to accommodate competitors of different ages. The first is the learn to compete U18 and marks the first step on the competitive pathway and it's a necessary prerequisite to the next stage, train to compete. And this is where our athletes are really starting to focus and they've chosen curling as their sport and they really wanna um, invest in their development and they're spending ample amount of time on their training as well as some competition. And they're competing locally at the regional level to the provincial level and then followed by the national level in U18. Um, so these curlers are really focusing in on curling at this, this age and pursuing the competitive route. And then many of these U18 players, when they move up into the next stage, the U21, train to compete. And this is kind of the next step um, and prepares curlers for future competition at the adult level. And very similar, these are athletes that are 
playing on fours curling team as well as mixed doubles teams is U21s. There's many provinces across Canada that have U21 championships now for mixed doubles play. And they're really developing, continuing to develop all their skills. And this also has a provincial, national, and now a world, world level. So opportunity in U21 to represent Canada at the world championships. The next in the competitive pathway is the Compete for Life 21 plus. And this is kind of the most diverse stage in the pathway and provides competitive opportunities across all adult competition categories. And this is many teams are playing at the regional and provincial territorial level and they are um, competing to get to starting to compete um, to get to the briar and the scotties as well as mixed doubles nationals each stage on the competitive pathway includes specific skill progressions in the ltcd to help build the five star curler this means with a curler with the necessary skills to succeed at their current stage before advancing to the next. The final pathway is the podium pathway, and it's reserved for those highly skilled curlers with the capabilities of representing Canada at the international championships or at the world and Olympic level. And it's made up of two distinct stages. The first is the next gen, and the second is the national team program. So the first stage is the learn to excel U25 stage and marks the first step on the podium pathway and it is reserved for curlers who are part of Curling Canada's Next Gen program. And this starts with events such as the U25 Next Gen Classic, which is a fours and mixed doubles curling event, as well as many U25 events are increasing across the country. And these are many teams still competing in the fours and mixed doubles with trying to represent their province or territory at the national championships. Train to Excel U25 Plus represents the pinnacle of the podium pathway and is reserved for curlers of the national team program. These are curlers that are training and curling is fully a part of their lives as they train to represent Canada at the World Championships and the Olympics. Something important amongst all stages, um, especially at the U21, U25 and U25 plus is performance standards. And, this is, and these are the best measure of any curler's performance in shooting accuracy especially if all shots are carefully charted and scored. The most direct application of shooting accuracy is the assessment of thrower performance, but it can also provide insights into the contributions of sweepers and line callers. Curling Canada and its members associations are strongly committed to developing all curlers in our system. The overarching goal here is to ensure that every coach has the necessary training and support for their curlers ongoing development with this in mind, Curling Canada's LTCD model features a fully aligned approach to coach development. All Curling Canada coach training programs are connected to the NCCP, National Coaching Certification Program, and fall into one of two streams. First, the community stream is aimed at coaches working at the community level. Coaches supporting Fundamentals U9, Learn to Train U12, and Train to Train U15. And we really encourage um, them to take the club coach youth course while those supporting curl for life 15 plus are best to take the club coach course the competition stream is aimed at coaches working with teams the competition coach is a standard for coaches in learn to compete u18 train to compete u21 and compete for life u21 plus teams with competition development coach eventually becoming the standard for coaches at the learn to excel U25 and train to excel U25 plus. The next part we're going to talk about today is the discover, try, learn, compete strategy. And with Curling Canada's long-term curler development, you may be wondering, how do we implement this pathway into our center? A recently developed strategy for curling centers is the discover, try, learn, play strategy. The discover, try, learn, play strategy is rooted in supporting curling centers in planning a fun, enjoyable experience for all customers in their curling journey. The first step in this process is discover. The discover component is how customers are introduced to the sport. This may be through social media, your center's website, watching on TV, croca curl, community outreach, referrals from existing curlers, networking, customizing your approaches, and even through word of mouth. So a few questions to ponder is, how do we discover curling at your center? What are your plans for the marketing of your programs and events? And are there any specific groups we should be targeting for our marketing? So the, this is a really important first step is this is what's really the marketing initiatives that's going to um, get, your, get new members into your facility. Moving into the try portion, 
Um, these are programs aimed at people who have limited previous exposure to the game of curling. The intent of this program is to give individuals the opportunity to easily experience our sport and game of curling without long-term commitment. These programs will orientate people to curling and what your centre has to offer and are designed to give them a pathway into our sport. These events are a great way to produce potential new members to your centre. A few examples of these are open houses, try curling days, drop-in sessions, corporate events, fun spiels. These are really the opportunity for people to get into our sport and it's, these are their first steps on the ice trying it. The next is learn. These programs are designed to enhance a curler's abilities regardless of their current skill set. These can be youth or adult programs and can be aimed at any group from beginner to advanced. Some things to think about. How do people learn curling at your center? Curling really is a challenging and technical sport and really requires proper instruction and coaching when new curlers are coming into our sport. So I'd like to ask, what are you able to offer at your curling center where these new participants to the sport are able to enhance their skill set as curling is very challenging? So a few of these are youth or adult learn to curl programs, private lessons. And something really key to note here is that learn to curl programs, they really need to be fun, safe, and positive. For example, when you're doing a youth learn to curl session, can you play music during warm-ups or the games portion? of your youth learn to curl program, making a fun, enjoyable experience for participants. Next is play, and play really encompasses um, a large, large portion of the strategy. And these are leagues or events aimed at allowing curlers to have fun and experience the game on their own terms. A few examples of these are youth leagues, adult leagues, beginner leagues, novice leagues, competitive leagues. And something key to note here, especially as we move into the future of curling is the flexible work um, today is uh, an opportunity for all clubs as people people can curl at all times during the day. So I'd like to kind of ask and for you to think about is how can you incorporate um, different or new leagues moving into the future? Um, and these leagues really need to be at all times of the season. So thinking about our league intakes, can we offer can we offer a league that starts in the fall, in the winter, and the spring? Um, and having different league intakes as people really are looking today um, for less commitment and but still being able to participate and it's really a challenge if our leagues are full season in length so we really want to be looking at providing a really inclusive um, league intake schedule for for our participants in league and club members. A couple categories that are a part of play are compete and go so compete are really events allowing players and teams to compete with others at similar skill levels and demographics to themselves. This can be for any age group. So one example of compete in curling is the club championships. And this is where curlers play in their weekly leagues and they get to take their next steps from league play um, in their curling centers and compete for the chance to represent their province or territory. So this is a really opportunity for all Canadians um, in provinces and territories across the country to be able to compete at the club level and be also able to have the chance to play in a provincial champion or territorial championship and represent their province or territory to nationals. And then a new kind of concept in curling is go. And this isn't new to sport in general, but new to the curling world. And these are really spontaneous, casual, convenient opportunities for participants at any age or stage to curl anytime. So how can we go curling? It's Saturday afternoon and you're looking for something to do. Currently, think if your rink, if someone could just walk in and, and just go curling and just go when it works for them, when it's convenient for them without any previous planning and an example I'd like to think about here is golf and how it can be any day time there's golf courses open where you can just go golfing when it works for you so really thinking in the sport of curling is how can we implement this in our curling centers where you can just go curling when it's convenient for you and a few things a few further things to think about when planning the play category are you implementing new league formats we talked earlier a little bit about singles doubles triples I think it's really important that as we move into the future of curling that we look at um, challenging what the status quo is and looking at incorporating new leagues and opportunities for people to play. And this really comes down to formats. 
And no, at the end of the day, no new curler coming into our sport knows what the format is. So can we, can we be more accommodating by offering different formats, such as those singles, doubles, and triple opportunities, as well as offering a chance for these new players to get to learn all aspects of the sport and rotating positions. Um, that's something that I think is very important at the youth level to develop their skills and abilities by rotating positions. But I think it can also be incorporated at the adult level where you're being able to switch positions and you're able to learn all aspects of the game. Another thing to think about, are you experimenting with the length of the game? So number number of ends, people are looking for shorter, shorter time commitments. So are you experiencing with four end games, six end games, and really an opportunity here to have people come join, come join our sport and it only takes them um, about 90 or 60 minutes to complete a curling game and they can go back to living, go back to living their busy lives as um, everybody lives, everybody's living busy lives here and moving into the future. Something to also think about um, when planning the play category um, is the league level. So you have participants in your league, some maybe have curled for a couple years, some have curled for 10, 15, 20 plus years. So really looking at experimenting with the league level. So ladder system, skill divisions, challenge rounds. How can you, how can you foster a league environment where people are playing their similar skills and abilities um, on the other team? Another one is frequency of games. Can we be offering weekly or maybe is it bi-weekly, once monthly opportunity to come play our sport? So really thinking in when we're in the play category, um, thinking about the length of game, league level, lengths of the league draws and the frequency of games. So when planning, discover, try, learn, play, the key to the strategy for all curling centers is that you should have a focus on balancing all four areas. I think that's something that the strategy really promotes is having a balance in all four and it really creates a healthy, healthy system for participants in the curling center to be able to have an enjoyable experience. So really as a curling, curling center thinking, how can we have a balance? And I'd like to ask, do you have any initiatives, programs, and events planned at your center in all four key areas? Discover, try, learn, play. And are you hitting a wide enough demographics, ages, genders, races? So taking what we just learned here, I would like to go through an example if I was planning for the upcoming season in my curling center. And what I would really start to focus on in the Discover, the first step is targeted Facebook marketing and advertising and I think this is a tremendous way to reach a new reach a new market and audience to get new participants into the sport and this is it's fantastic to be able to share on your own personal Facebook pages but really exploring how you can take take maybe a few marketing dollars to be able to invest that into promoting ads um, in your area. I'd also look at having a new potential new website working with local schools to promote the rocks and rings programs and get those new youth curlers introduced to the sport. Try. Let's plan some different intakes this upcoming curling season and have some try curling days and sessions throughout the whole season. And I think this is super important in the sense of curling when we see on TV our most popular events, the Briar and the Scotties. These two events is a tremendous opportunity, maybe when people are viewing curling for the first time and a chance for them to join your sport. So maybe look at offering in the March, February timeframe, some new, some new try curling, try curling events. I'd also look at drop-in sessions and well as maybe a few bring a friend nights throughout the season. Learn, planning both youth and adult learn to curl programs as well as availability for private instruction and really in these youth programs, having a healthy balance of having fun, learning and instruction, but also game opportunities, as well as adult learn to curl sessions. And I think in both youth and adult learn to curl, it's super important that we are planning well-planned instructed sessions is we want people and participants and young and adult curlers alike coming, wanting to come back to our sport after having an enjoyable experience and wanting to have more versus leaving and feeling sore and tired and um, maybe frustrated, so let's have well-planned youth learn to curl and adult learn to curl programs. Play. I'd really look at this coming season having the availability of go sessions, times where people are able to just go curling or maybe experimenting with a go curling sheet where maybe that's a sheet potentially dedicated at your curling center that's able to just have go curling where you can go curling when, when it's convenient, where it's very casual, no commitment. Another thing I'd look at starting is a triples league and maybe even tailoring it to a family triples league. I think this is a 
tremendous opportunity where you can have adults and youth curlers playing together and it's open gender you're able to rotate all the positions i think this is something that's very would be very beneficial for any curling center across the country to implement as well as maybe looking at having a noon doubles league I think now with flexible work from home, you're able to potentially reach a new market with um, the new work environment in 2023 and beyond and looking at different ways of how can someone maybe spend 60, 90 minutes when maybe they have their kids are in school or on their lunch break and that they have a little bit of flexibility on their work schedule. So maybe looking at incorporating a midday doubles league. A few stats to think about when planning your programs, initiatives, and events is the first one I'd like to mention is just that 52% of people participate in the sport because it's both active and social. So the question that I would pose to you today is how are you providing a social experience in addition to curling? Another one, 89% of people have watched curling. This is a tremendously high number. So how do we integrate new curlers around the time when curling is popular on TV, as we mentioned earlier? This is typically mid-season after most centers have typically set their league times and schedules for the season. 77% of people perceive finding a team as a barrier to participation. So I'd like to ask, how is your center encouraging and accommodating individual registrations or pairs into our sport? And maybe the best way to look at this is by having singles and doubles and triples league where it only takes a couple people to form a team and you can grab your friend and come out and enjoy our, enjoy our sport. 46% of people believe that they are not skilled enough to join a curling center. So how are you making beginners feel more comfortable? And I think this really comes down to the discover, try, learn, play strategy. They discovered it, they tried it, but then before they start playing our sport and playing in leagues, they have a learn to curl program that they've been a part of and they've been able to learn our sport. So really being able to develop those skills as we really making more shots is gonna be much more enjoyable. So we really wanna focus on having uh, learn, learn to curl programs where they do feel skilled enough to join leagues. And then an important component of all of this is advocacy. I think advocacy is important both for those that are currently playing, um, those that are maybe in a learn to curl program, they can advocate for how, how well their experience was in the learn to curl program and they can advocate to new people in the try curling programs as well as discover. So this might not even be an existing member of your curling center, but someone that's just an advocate for curling. They might be a fan who's watching on TV and um, rave about how great of a sport it is to go out and play. So really in incorporating in all the discover, try, learn, play is how important advocacy is in our sport. And just a few more things to think about for the discover, try, learn, play um, strategy is emerging generations cherish their time more than they do their money. So they'll pay, they'll pay more in exchange for volunteering less. They are also more minimalistic. They value quality over quantity and experiences over materialistic stuff. So really focusing on what do our new participants and our new, new members um, in our sport, they are coming with more of a minimalistic mindset. New members are an opportunity to start fresh. They don't know the way that it has been or the traditions and are not burdened by precedent or tradition. To conclude today, we discussed the long-term curler development guide and how it really encompasses both from starting when you're six, right through to the competitive and podium pathways and recreational pathways and how you can curl, curl for life. So that's the wonderful thing with curling. It's a life, lifelong sport from ages six to all the way up to you can play, be playing when you're 100 so it's a, it's a great guy that's able to support, support curlers, but also parents, coaches, instructors, curling centers, and, and creating a complete pathway for our, for our participants. No matter your age and stage, there's a path for everyone in our sport. When superior experiences, programming, leagues, and events are offered and built by best practices and sound strategy. Curling is a sport that can be practiced for a lifetime, regardless of your age, gender, or level of ability. Wherever a customer is in their journey, a sound pathway and strategy is pivotal to one's success and enjoyment. Today, we discussed Curling Canada's long-term curler development guide, as well as a strategy to help implement some of the things discussed in the LTCD, the Discover, Try, Learn, Play strategy. And no matter your age and stage, there's a path for everyone in the sport of curling when superior experiences, programs, leagues, and events are offered and built 
by best practices and sound strategy. Curling is a sport that can be practiced for a lifetime, regardless of your age, experiences, or level of ability. Wherever a customer is in their journey, a sound pathway and strategy is pivotal to one's success and enjoyment. Thank you for joining this session on a customer's journey in the sport of curling. And for any questions, please contact any of the Curling Canada Provincial and Territorial Member Associations. And I'm wishing you all the success in your curling centres and participants' journey. Thank you.